Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Please subscribe guys, it really does help with the algorithm and a thumbs up never hurts as well. So I wanted to bring you guys this, you were asking for it and it has finally arrived. This is the Working Money Channel cash out plan now available on Android. Produced by Carrie from App Labs, guys, now you can download it. I will put this link in the description of the video. For those of you guys uh, who are interested in my uh, in my spreadsheet, I also do have that available as a, uh, as a downloadable link. It is a cash out plan. We are getting closer and closer to the top of this bull run. So uh, I think it is prudent to have a plan in place, guys, if you do not have one already. Over here on the left-hand side, you uh, input all your cryptos and you put in your targets. And uh, on the spreadsheet, you can see all the valuations depending on where you decide to cash out. But now you can have it in a handy app available for Android and for iPhone, guys. I'll link both of these links in the description. Uh, and here's just the QR code if you guys are uh, sitting in front of your computer screen right now and want to download the Android version. So I gotta thank Carrie at App Labs. Guys, here is his QR code for XRP donations. I'm not getting any money from this. I just wanted to let you guys know about that. So please donate XRP to Carrie, even if it's just a few XRP for his hard work and effort put into this app. And Bitcoin is looking like it is surprising us a little this morning. Right now, trading at $62,700, guys. I've got Bitcoin up here on the four hour, and we can see it has sprung to life over the early hours in the morning if you are in the Eastern Standard Time Zone. So what's going on here? Bitcoin uh, just last night was trading just under 60000 Now it's all the way back up past $62,700. So here's what I'm looking at now on the chart, guys, on the micro time frame. Um, this is looking like a head and shoulders pattern, which um, is not great because what this generally suggests is a move to the downside. But if we can get past this shoulder up here, so um, if I just remove the purple and uh, you guys can see uh, the shoulder, if I zoom in here, the shoulder up here, right up here, the top of that would denote the first shoulder before the head came up. So if we can get above that level, and as you guys can see, uh, zooming in real closely, we are very, very close to that right now. So um, it is a head and shoulders pattern technically, but you know we are looking to break up to the upside and then that would ultimately negate this pattern altogether. The good news is guys, throwing Bitcoin here on the daily, you can see we are continuing to make our way up. Uh, over the last couple of days, we did break that high for Bitcoin right up there, $67,000. And now we're just kind of waiting to see what Bitcoin will do next. I mean, uh, you know, this is going to be crucial because breaking above this and uh, breaking above it with conviction would certainly mean new all-time highs for Bitcoin in Uncharted. Then we'd be in Uncharted territories. Um, but realistically, we could see, you know, something like this over the next little while before we ultimately just break up to the upside and uh, you know finally record those new highs. So this is a waiting game. We're still just kind of waiting and seeing what uh, what we're going to see next for Bitcoin. I mean, we already have passed that first uh, hurdle, which is just getting above all time high, but we really didn't get above all time high with conviction, at least not yet. We did see that sharp retrace back down. Um, and this is what trends tend to do. So it's great that we're seeing that nice, robust green candlestick now on the daily. Uh, bringing up XRP, we can see XRP still trading at around $1.08. So uh, nothing to really write home about with regards to XRP and the rest of the altcoin space. It's going to be about Bitcoin and, uh, you know, the trends just kind of vacillate back and forth. It's Bitcoin, then it's altcoins, then it's Bitcoin, then it's altcoins. Keeps going back and forth. So uh, right now, the focus is on Bitcoin. We got to see what that coin is doing before we really get a sense of where altcoins are going to go next. And I did a video yesterday, guys. I don't know if you caught it. With regards to that uh, David Schwartz tweet about the, uh, the, the American Liberty ship. And there was a news piece just the other day uh, suggesting that explosives in this wartime, this World War II era ship could in fact create a tsunami that could affect the coast of the UK. Now, if you guys didn't catch that video, I'll link it up here in the top right-hand corner. Tsunami off the coast of the UK, an interesting and quite dangerous possibility, really. But Kerry from App Labs actually brought this to my attention. Now, he's located in Australia. Baby boomers expected to leave 
wealth tsunami of $320,000, I suppose that is the average, for their kids. So we've talked about this idea of a wealth tsunami before on this channel and uh, how there is going to be that exchange of value from one generation down to another generation. And this is not just going to be happening in Australia, it's going to be happening all around the world. Baby boomers are expected to pass a whopping $3.5 trillion to their kids in the next 15 years uh, with a quarter of Aussies banking on the inheritance to give them the good life, new research has found. There is an estimated 3.5 million children from the baby boomer generation. And if 70% of that wealth is transferred, the average Australian could have a massive $320,000 passed on to them. The research revealed that almost two in three Aussies aged 60 and over are planning to leave an inheritance to their kids, with 57% looking to leave everything to them. Meanwhile, 19% will only pass on the family home and 13% would hand over their savings to their kids. So just some statistics there with regards to uh, some Australian numbers. We know uh, in the United States and countries like Canada and parts of Western Europe, we may see the same kinds of things, right? And the imagery that it conjures up is a wealth tsunami. And so here was the front page of that article that uh, Carrie also sent me, which is reminiscent of yesterday's video. Don't know if that necessarily has to do with a wealth tsunami. However, you know, since we're on the topic of money and cryptocurrency and how things are shifting, this is definitely going to be a major shift and uh, it certainly is going to happen. The baby boomers aren't getting any younger. A lot of wealth right now is being held by that generation. And so, um, I mean, it's only logical if they can afford it for them to be passing that wealth down to their children. So I wanted to thank Carrie so much for posting that, guys. I also saw this from the VeChain Foundation. Now, this was from a few days ago, and I missed this. VeChain received a certificate from the China Association for Standardization, a body under the State Council, for their major contributions to the TEAT-CAS 493-2021 standard for household electrical equipment. Our blockchain technology is becoming the industry standard. This is coming from, again, guys, the VeChain Foundation, another uh, organization that actually has a use case for their cryptocurrency and is conducting business right now in the real world with the blockchain. So here's the certificate here and uh, it is in uh, one of the Chinese languages that I cannot read, but uh, someone down here actually did translate that from Chinese to English, Shanghai VeChain Information Technology Company Limited participated in the preparation of the China Association for Standardization, online testing service supporting technical specifications and has made positive contributions to the promotion of technical progress in the electrical and electric fields. This levy is specially awarded for encouragement. So boom, VeChain on that Chinese standard, kind of similar to what is going on with uh, Ripple and XRP getting on the ISO 20022 standard in their industry. VeChain in China on the T-CAS 493-2021 standard for uh, electrical equipment, household electrical equipment specifically in China. So that's great news there. Real world utility, this is what we're focused on for cryptocurrencies and uh, you know the rest of the world especially G7 countries also looking for some standardization guys this tweeted out from Jimmy Valley here on Twitter never could happen call me when it's five dollars fringe worthy and scripted wish I had what he was smoking G7 financial leaders reach agreement on CBDCs so they reached an agreement proposition on 13 public policy principles for central bank digital currencies in a move that would pave the way for greater adoption of CBDCs across the world's leading economies. According to the statement from the U.S. Treasury Department, the public policy principles will be grounded in transparency, some economic governance, and a respect for the rule of law in a way designed to foster innovation and the development of new digital currencies for retail purposes. And so in a joint statement, the senior finance and central bank officials from across the G7 said that while innovation in money can bring benefits, these must be tempered by regulation to deal with the potential wider public policy fallout. Here's a quote, innovation in digital money and payments has the potential to bring significant benefits, but also raises considerable public policy and regulatory issues. Strong international coordination and cooperation on these issues helps to ensure that public and private sector innovation will deliver domestic and cross-border benefits while being safe for users and the wider financial system. So obviously G7 countries want 
wanting that international standard uh, so that they can, um, you know, conduct business in a safe manner. It has to be a standard that uh, everybody is willing to get on, right? Interoperability, something that Ripple does very, very well. And since Ripple is a partner of the World Economic Forum and also in cozy with some of these other organizations, like, let me continue here. The comments come following a meeting of financial officials in person in Washington as part of a series of meetings bringing together the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund under the leadership of the UK Chancellor Rishi Sunak. So the World Bank is involved in this, the International Monetary Fund as well, two companies that are uh, very familiar with Ripple and uh, dare I say maybe even fairly cozy with uh, the Ripple company. In their statement, the officials said central bank digital currencies would ultimately stand alongside cash, providing a safe liquid alternative for settling payments digitally and efficiently. So boom, this coming from G7 countries now with this statement, this most recent statement from only a few days ago, they have reached an agreement on 13 public policy principles for CBDCs, ushering in a new era for finance that will include central bank digital currency. So I wanted to thank Jimmy Valley for posting that. And did you guys see this? Jimmy Valley, it's done Congratulations to all. Now, without context, you might not understand what this really means and why you should be really excited by this. Or at least this is how I'm reading it, all right? I might be wrong. So this is a photo of Jimmy Valley. Looks like he is in some kind of private jet here uh, going somewhere. James Rule XRP congratulating him. Uh, Bond Crypt XRP also with some congratulations. But Michael at Val5 links here asking for some context. Yes, context, this is what we need. Well, if you guys remember, I did a video about this just last month, and if uh, if you guys have not seen that video, with regards to Jimmy Valley, he is the CEO of Val Hill Capital, claiming a 10 to $35,000 XRP, perhaps, potentially, that is his prediction, not mine. Okay, if you guys didn't catch that video, I'll link it up here in the top right-hand corner. But there were some draft agreements that uh, were still kind of floating around that had not, uh, there was nothing solidified at that moment in time for the repurchase, guys, of XRP from XRP HODLers. So just to kind of sum it up, I want to bring you guys this document from back in September of 2021, okay? It's confidential committee resolutions to approve proposed terms for the purchase of XRP from participating token holders. Whereas the member of the confidential committee evaluated the confidential term sheet, proposed terms for the purchase of XRP tokens from participating token holders in substantially the form attached here to the proposed terms and determine the proposed terms to be acceptable to a reasonably prudent XRP token holder. And such members of the confidential committee have determined it would be necessary, advisable, and in the best interests of all potential participating token holders, as defined in the proposed terms, that Val Hill Capital, together with its members, managers, directors, officers, subsidiaries, and affiliates, namely Val Hill, will take certain actions to submit the proposed terms to the relevant party set forth in the proposed terms in order to implement a proposed transaction as defined in the proposed terms as quickly and expediously as practicable. Now, therefore, it will be resolved that the form, terms, and provisions of the proposed terms are hereby authorized and approved with such non-material modifications and changes herein as any director, manager, or officer of Val Hill that is submitting such proposed terms as contemplated herein shall deem appropriate such submission to conclusively evidence that determination. Resolved further, Val Hill is hereby authorized and directed to take any and all responsible ethical, legal, and moral actions to submit the proposed terms to the relevant parties set forth in the proposed terms in order to implement a proposed transaction as quickly and expediously as practicable. Uh, uh, resolved further that any and all acts, transactions, agreements, and certificates previously executed or taken by the confidential committee and each member thereof of Val Hill in connection with the foregoing B and they each hereby are in all respects approved and ratified with the same force and effect as if each such act, transaction, agreement, or certificate has been specifically authorized in advance by resolution of the confidential committee and resolve further that a copy of these resolutions shall be filed in the official books and records of the confidential committee. So this is just the paperwork, uh, basically allowing Val Hill Capital to, uh, what it sounds like is to uh, act on behalf of their uh, of their token holders, their participating token holders, a motion to approve the foregoing resolutions being made by a member of the confidential committee and seconded by another member of the confidential committee. Our resolutions were unanimous, adopted with immediate effect. So this was uh, signed, guys, by the secretary of the meeting here, ultimately for a federal buyback 
of XRP. And uh, when I did that video originally, I actually got it wrong. I thought Val Hill was buying back the XRP, but James Rule over here uh, commented in the comment section and I had to pin that tweet. No, this is for a Fed buyback of XRP. And on top of it all, beyond the Lambo moon prices, uh, Jesse Mueller down here saying, you know, anyone who knows James knows Val Hill Capital is his buddy's company. So this is definitely true and privileged information. Thank you, James. So back to the photo guys, Jimmy Valley saying it's done. Congratulations to all. That sounds to me like the ink is finally dry on the paper. And so now it's only a matter of time before the Fed is going to require and you are going to want to sell your XRP to the Fed. And considering this prediction, I'm assuming it's going to look like a very, very tempting offer. I think the the, the state of affairs throughout the world is, is such that we're going to need a solution like an XRP for liquidity purposes sooner rather than later. Uh, so the question is then, OK, we've magically resolved it. Uh, where does where does the price go? It's it's easy uh, uh, to project that it that it's a double digit number. So you know I think it immediately shoots up to a ten dollar, potentially twenty dollars. Uh, the wild card to me is that there is actually a deal to be done among the central banks and and governments to basically have XRP work as the, the world's bridge currency, a neutral, a neutral asset that could be traded between the central banks to move a specific type of fiat to another type of fiat. Um, if, if that's what occurs, uh, it's back to what we were discussing earlier, it's gotta cover kind of all the money. And I think you're looking at a range that XRP would settle on agreement. So this would happen instantaneously Boom, 10,000 to $35,000 a coin. Now I know I've reported on this before, but wanted to get you guys back up to speed considering Jimmy Valley posted this yesterday afternoon. If you're hearing him, the wild card is still going to be with the central banks, but uh, you know, coincidentally enough, Jimmy Valley also was the one who posted this article discussing how G7 countries have now reached an agreed position on 13 public policy principles regarding central bank digital currencies. So guys, it sounds like it's coming to fruition. It sounds like all things are coming to a head. And if you do not have your cash out plan ready, you can download the Excel spreadsheet or you can get the Android version, the iPhone version. They're all available down in the description of the video guys and make sure you do tip carry from App Labs, some XRP. So what do you guys think? How soon is it gonna be before the Fed really does wanna buy back your XRP? Tell me down in the comments what you guys think and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one guys.